Hello everyone and welcome back to the F1 2019 Karimo series here around the Hungara ring in obviously Hungary hence the name and well we've got well, this is the vehicle performance comparison as you can see we're no longer the fourth best car alpha have jumped us but obviously we are we're basically exactly level with them if we have a better look at the progress history here we can see we're basically tied with Racing point and that alpha car, so it's going to be extremely close. Um, but yeah, we've got some messages anyway, which I forgot to show at the start. So we've got that completed, no real surprise there. Um, durability ones don't fail, and the weather is clear for qualifying. Oh, but that is re that is heavy rain for the whole of the race. That's that could get interesting. Um, but yeah, anyway, it should be a bit of fun, I guess. But that's going to be an interesting race so other than that let's go on into qualifying here we go then in Q1 for our first lap so coming on down the long straight you may notice that we have a new helmet for this weekend we'll be going match the old one and um, yeah I just want to use this helmet for this weekend for no apparent reason Not very wide through turn one and also very wide through turn two which is never ideal but it's not terrible to go wide through turn two it just means you've got a tighter turn three through there and now coming up up the hill towards turn four the range there very easy to lose the car through there so we're running a little bit wide up through turn five but it's not too bad to run wide you just don't want to get too far on the inside this hasn't been the best lap but it hasn't been too bad so she actually ended up on the grass a little bit on the next day because we went deep into the first part of that nice and solid through the sort of left right section there now we go left instantly right with a very very quick corner there so you can just sort of throw the car around hope it sticks which it normally does in the dry conditions anyway and the wet it's a little bit different but I'm sure you'll be able to see that later on in the wet race and now coming up through the final two corners all about keeping your minimum speed up through here and making sure to not run out too wide but also get as much, make, take as much curb as you sort of can really there's a lap time and a one that 17.1 which is good enough for second at this moment in time but obviously it will not stay in second at the end of Q1 then so we were finished off in P9 in the end so we we're comfortably through but very very close and Sergio Perez did not make it out of Q1 so that is a real real shock to be fair here we go and in Q2 so Perez not making it out of Q1 makes it a lot easy for us as we cross the line for our first lap in Q1 which is a very very scruffy terrible one five tips down on our previous best and we could definitely improve on that and we're definitely going to have to improve on that here we go then time for the improvement lap we need to improve by about five or six tenths if we want to make it into Q3 through turn one we've gone way too late on the brakes and that has left us very very wide um, but we still gained a lot of time because like I said that last lap was extremely scruffy which I set much better through here, much more tidy, and a little bit wide. We could have maybe made it a little bit of a wider turn three, but we didn't, so yeah, that's that. And now up through turn four. 30 seconds left in the Taking session. Taking very nice. 30 seconds left in the session, obviously we are setting this lap time, and you get, if you're on to set a lap, you get to make it to the checkered flag. You don't just, it doesn't just sort of stop you from setting a lap because the session's over, essentially up through here we've gained a lot of time because I actually went up, went up on the grass through there the time before which is why I've gained so much time now running a little bit wide through there losing the back end a bit but didn't lose as much time we're up quite a bit on our previous best but I kind of expected to be because it was a really really bad lap now around the final two quarters to be fair that really bad lap was still good enough for P11 so this should comfortably see us through this lap time if you look in the top left and in the top right obviously with the delta and here we go then across the line and it's good enough for P8 so yep we are through comfortably to P um, to Q3 sorry so that is very very good right there so there we go Carlos Sainz did not make it out so us making it through kicked him out and down into the drop zone and now here we go into Q3 we have not set a lap time because they had been on worn tyres so we just decided to not set a lap time we barely even made the line, we made the line by about 3 seconds I think we went out very very late so we're going to be the last person to set a lap here which isn't going to make much of a difference because we're certainly not going to be putting it on pole in this McLaren car 
Yeah, so this felt like a fairly side lap so far. I made a bit of mistakes through there. I actually ended up on the grass. I'm not really sure how. Very, very good through turn four. Gives us a great run down here, which is exactly what we got. And we're keeping that speed up and getting on the power at just the right time. Very nice through there. A little bit deep into there, but we managed to make it work and didn't go really wide, which is what I've done a few times before. A little bit lost the back end a bit through there, but we still managed to get a decent exit, which is absolutely fine in the end. Flinging the car to the right hand side. Nothing really wrong with that, and now under braking, smashes into the kerb. Not always the best idea through there, but it worked fine that time. Again, you don't always want to hit the outside kerb through there either. It's never always the smartest thing, but luckily we kept the car in a straight line. And it wasn't the best lap, but it certainly wasn't terrible. As that is the line, and that is good enough for what, P6. It didn't feel like a great lap, but that is actually a really, really good qualifying position. So no complaints there whatsoever. With qualifying complete, let's review our top three today: Hamilton, Vettel, and Max Verstappen. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. We've seen some astonishing Grand Prix here over the years, haven't we? The drama of 2015 is a recent example. Jensen Button's first win on a wet track in 2006, or in 1997, Damon Hill's heartbreak in the Arrows after a late gearbox failure cost him what would have been the team's only ever victory. What a wonderful place this is to come racing today. The Hungaro Ring, it's like Monaco without the boats. 14 corners, six to the left and eight to the right, and some very tricky corners to deal with. These rainy conditions out there aren't going to help either, so it's very likely we'll see a safety car or two during today's race. Alongside me to discuss all the action today is Anthony Davidson. Thanks for joining us, Ant, and tell me, you were down in the pit lane earlier. How do you think the track conditions are today? Well, the surface looks clean enough, but I'm a little bit worried about the track temperature. It's pretty cool out there, which could give some teams difficulties when it comes to keeping their tyres in the right operating window. The cars out there that work their tyres hard and really put a lot of energy through them, they'll be the ones that are better off. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Valtteri Bottas, Iceman, Raikkonen, Albon, Ricardo, and Carlos Sainz, Magnussen, Giovinazzi, Daniel Kvyat, and Hulkenberg, Perez, Stroll, Roman Grosjean and George Russell, Kubica and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. And now it's time to head down to the track. Excellent job yesterday. We qualified above expectations. Let's go out there and put in a performance. Here we are on the rainy Sunday, so we have to... Well, you don't have to, but... In wet conditions is always good to underfuel your car because you're going to be in lean mix because you get the best traction and grip when you're in lean mix essentially so let's just fuel my car down to basically no extra fuel standard strategy is fine I might change it in the race but other than that I think it's time to get going here we go then one two three four five lights ahead of us here in Hungary and we are underway we've actually had a fire of a start compared to Bottas to the left of us but obviously that Mercedes power engine is going to Sorry, power unit, should I say, is going to help him to stay in front of us here as we slow it down. But we don't slow it down very much. We pile into the side of Leclerc. Somehow, I don't know how, we haven't picked up any damage. We weren't concentrating and just shoved Bottas off the track. But somehow, out of all of that, we've actually gained a position, I think. Yeah, we have, and we have managed to get past Bottas. But he's still on our inside. Still on our inside, but we have now got past Bottas as we come through. Turns through. We might even have a look at Leclerc because he had to slow down a little bit because of the cars in front of him here. Go slightly later on the brakes through here. It's not exactly a best overtaken opportunity. We've lost the back end very nearly. Could have caused a crash there, but we just about kept it. But we couldn't get past Leclerc. And we're sticking in P5, which is still just where I think I should be really after that start. So at the end of lap one, 
Hamilton leads the Grand Prix from Verstappen, from Vettel, from Leclerc, from myself, and then from Bottas here. As we are quite happy where we are really at this moment in time, we're just behind the two Ferraris there. That Ferrari car isn't the best car, that's for sure, and we're we can probably stick up keep up to them if we can keep decent pace up in the rain, but I just need to get into a good rhythm here. Because I'm certainly not in that at the moment, I'm just making a few few silly mistakes, I'm just getting the power down a bit too early, and these tyres are overheating extremely easily, I lose the backing for a second and the tyres overheat and I have to slow it down a bit to cool them down and it's not not ideal, but it's not too bad. Here we're going on to lap 3, we have lost a lot of time to Leclerc behind him, Bottas is right behind us, but down the straights he's kind of nothing, he's not really gaining much on us, but Leclerc isn't that far in front of us, and if he can catch up to his teammate in front then obviously will easily be able to catch him when they're having a battle because battling in the rain slows you down a lot and obviously they're in the same car and both the AI so levels are very very similar because they are both very very similar pace in real life and on the game so it would be one hell of a battle to be fair and they are he is actually right up to the back of well he's getting there because Vettel's on the back of Verstappen there could be a slight train form in here in the wet but for now Everyone's keeping their distance. Now onto lap 5. Leclerc still a little bit on the back of Vettel, but he's not too close. We will have to worry about behind us. Bossa seems to just be getting closer and closer as my tyres were overheating again there. Through that second sector, my tyres are always just overheating, and there's nothing I can really do about it because it's so easy to lose the back end through there that I can't really stop it in a way. So I just need to hope that start getting to a grip of him or, or else his tyres just going to die. Yep, heavy rain for a while so that means basically rest, the rest of the race is just going to be heavy rain. Which is slightly more boring and interchangeable conditions race but it's not too bad because it's still heavy rain, it's still a bit of fun. Now on to lap 6, Leclerc now has truly caught up to the back of Vettel. I don't know if anyone's got a problem or anything but they seem to have slowed down an awful lot because we're sort of catching up to them as well so maybe Vettel's picked up some wing damage or something maybe he might have hit into the back of Verstappen as we massively lose the back end here that's what I'm saying that whole this second sector here is a killer like you just lose the back end even under braking through there I didn't that time but in the past I have done which once again kills your tyres as yeah Verst Verstappen's starting to pull away from Vettel so I'm starting to wonder if he has some kind of problem but for now Leclerc's behind Vettel and we're behind Leclerc keeping Bottas at bay for the time being which is ideal really on to the end, end of lap 7 start of lap 8 now that's where so we're us. starting to lose a lot of time but that was not a good lap time from us so I don't think it's too bad so hopefully we can close right back up to him now on the start of lap 9 you can see well, I wanted to close back up to it. We've closed back up to it. We're right up behind the two Ferraris. Here is Leclerc. He's seeming to be going very slowly, but that's because I reckon that Vettel does have an issue. As Jeff comes over the radio to tell me about a new strategy, which is probably... Okay, box a lap earlier, so it's nothing to do with change of tyres or anything. Just pitting one lap early, which won't make a massive difference. It might, but I doubt that it will and now coming through here it's a this is such a hard corner in the wet to be honest it's so easy to lose the back end but that was very nice there now coming to the start of lap 10 now we just need to watch as Leclerc is going around the outside of Sebastian Vettel here is he gonna be able to pull it off I think he's got it has he just get the power down I think there it is Leclerc has got himself up into P3 and past Sebastian Vettel a very very nice overtake there from the Ferrari driver as we are now coming behind them both here as we've actually had a great run could we go for an old switcheroo here yes we can as that is yeah Vettel has got front wing damage you can see on his car as we could go later on the brake stand him because of that front wing damage as that is up and that is us up into P4 and just one place off the podium and and at the way this is going, I reckon we can get Leclerc here, is at the end of lap 10. Going through the trickiest corner on the track, in my opinion, in the wet. We've taken it perfectly, and that's going to give us a great run. Leclerc has to go defensive, as we're going to now try and hold it around the outside. Was it a mistake from him to go defensive? I think it probably was, as we're now going to go up the inside of Leclerc. 
beautiful overtake there around the outside to then sort of switch it back to the inside. It wasn't really a switch back, but it sort of was. And that is a superb overtake, which I am very, very happy about. We are now into the final podium position. And I think that Leclerc did have some front wing damage as well, to be honest, which is just perfect for him. <laughs> I think that maybe he picked up some and he was battling with Vettel, so... Both Ferraris with wing damage, that means hopefully we can pull away from Bottas because he'll they'll hold up Bottas as well. So that'd be really, really good for us. And now all the way on to lap 17 now we have come into the pits. As you can see in the top left, we are purple, which means that we have the fastest lap in the Grand Prix. We sort of pushed the tyres right at the end of the stint to do that. And we actually held up Hamilton in the pits, which has made us a little bit nearer to him. As we're going to come out in the traffic of Leclerc and Albon. Now, just after coming out of the pits here, we're right behind Leclerc, but he definitely has some kind of front wing damage because he's dropped off massively. We've slammed him in the rear, but luckily we haven't picked up any damage here as now Leclerc is not going to let us go anywhere. We actually hit him again there. No damage again. And somehow we haven't picked up damage at all this race, even though I've got no idea how. And we did make the overtake there, so that works. Moving on to lap 18. Obviously a lap after we came to the pits, we did set a purple final sector, which is extremely promising for us here. As I reckon that these lap times could start tumbling, so track seems to have improved a bit, it's a little bit drier. Which means, okay, these wet tyres are fine when it's really, really wet, but obviously, if a track's slightly drier, they're still going to have a little bit more grip than if a track is like, just puddles galore, because, yeah, it makes sense really, for that to happen. as we have now improved on that other lap now a lap later we sorry two laps later should i say we've gone even quicker as we are absolutely flying here we are just improving improving and improving every single lap we're just going quicker here we've got the fastest lap and we're just flying verstappen's been overtaken by hamilton because hamilton was in second and he's now made a move for the lead of the grand prix as we make it even quicker. This has been the best lap for us here as we're going to see Verstappen does take that fastest lap by two temps on us here. Which is a shame but I reckon we've still got two temps that we can gain. Or maybe even more we'll see. But for now anyway here's the quickest lap and we're still in the podium position which is absolutely phenomenal here. Here we go, and at the end of the lap, we set an absolute... This has been, like, the perfect lap. I couldn't have set any better lap. And then this is as good a lap as I could possibly probably set around here in the wet. 134.5, which I'm extremely happy with. We've absolutely destroyed this lap time, as we've caught wraps at the back of him as well, as a result of that. Here we go, then. This is probably the closest... I'm going to beat the Verstappen unless I can overtake him. There's certainly, if I can get past Verstappen, I reckon I can get past Hamilton and perhaps even win the Grand Prix, but that's much easier said than done because I just can't seem to get near enough to actually have a look at an overtaken opportunity. And as you can see, it's just down the straight, we're just not gaining anything, and we are so close to him, but yet so far away at the same time because it's just. It's so hard to overtake around this track. There's only a few overtaken opportunities, and when you've got a car that at the moment is going the same speed as you, and you can't, you can't, just can't find that extra few temps to overtake and get past him. It's just so, so difficult. I'm absolutely destroyed, Bottas behind. I think that's a 20 second gap behind. He must be held up by the Ferraris massively, and obviously I'm going really quick in a moment. We're green again through the first sector, but we're, this is. We're getting really, really close to Verstappen now. I reckon if we keep on going at this pace, we could get him here, but we've got to be careful because obviously he has slightly fresher tyres than us. And he's obviously in a quicker car. But we've, we've truly got into a rhythm now of this wet can, of this wet track. As we are absolutely flying. But Verstappen through here is so hard to follow because of the dirty air and obviously the wet conditions just makes it even worse. But, yeah, we've lost a little bit of time this lap. As you can see, that second sector, we lost a second to our fastest lap. Which is a real shame. As we go through the final two corners and we're just too far behind the staff to do anything for the time being. Which is a real shame. And on to lap 28. Now the staff has pulled away from us massively and I reckon this is gonna, the race is going to stay this way. 
And I don't think anything's going to change at all, really, because Bottas is so far behind me. And here we go, and on the final lap of the race, we've got a 30 second gap to Bottas behind, 1.6 seconds to the car in front. These tyres haven't gone off too bad, but they've lost a little bit of grip, as you can see. But we are still feeling okay. We just have to keep this track, sorry, keep this car on the racetrack for about another minute, and then we will come home with the fastest lap of the Grand Prix and in the final podium spot in P3, which will be our second P3. The first one obviously in China, which was a lot more dramatic than this one, but this has certainly been our best drive of this series. We have been real, we've really been up on the pace this whole this whole race, really. We've been there or thereabouts, so. It's actually been quite a tidy lap, really, considering it's the final lap of the race and these tyres are off a little bit. Pretty happy with this tidy lap to finish the race. And it's coming through the final quarter, so it is going to be Lewis Hamilton to win the Grand Prix. But we're only about three seconds behind him. This is def definitely the closest we've been to the lead car all series. It's Lewis Hamilton has won the Grand Prix, the staff in second. We have come third, which is a phenomenal result. Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. And that I really, really cannot complain with that whatsoever. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace. And our winner today showed they could do both. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So, let's review the driver's standings. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Well, you put me in a bit of a tight spot today, but I think I'll go for Pierre Gasly. He kept a cool head under pressure and made the most of some difficult circumstances. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Alfa Romeo, whose good result moves them further up the championship. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. We're going to start the Hungarian Grand Prix done and it's that time again we got the contract negotiations so well we did have a really really good contract and probably still get a really good contract to be honest I could we still stick with level 3 everything tinkle hard turn all this down um, quality position 8th race position 7th I think that's fair uh, see what this gets us just over. Okay. Let's try something else. Um. All right. What do I want? And race bonus, I definitely want. Unlimited upgrade. That really doesn't actually matter that much, but I'll keep it. I think three upgrades per department. That's actually. That's probably fine. I reckon. Let's do it. That will definitely be fine right. as well. So there the we go. Been agreed. All that's left is to sign the paperwork. So we'll that's all done. From the next race weekend. So we have just beaten our rival, Carlos Sainz, or teammate. So you can say we've beaten Perez just about, which is good. There are the stats if anyone is interested in my actual stats for this thing. You can pause and look at it if you are interested, because I'm not going to read them all out. Um, so we have 1,500 R&D points, so this is going to be very good. So we can definitely do some upgrades. So I want to do... I'm not going to bother with durability yet, I just want to do some actual upgrades in general, so... I could probably go... Um, it's going to cost just over a thousand. So I don't think I could afford this and a major upgrade. So is there any other major upgrades? For I don't think there is, so let's just do... 
this. What do you think of this one? Okay, now I can. I'm, yeah, I kind of forgot I can do two minor upgrades. So we'll bring, unless this fate is, we'll bring two minor upgrades to the next weekend. So that is very, very good. And then that should put us a little bit better on the tree. So it should put us back up to whereabouts Alpha Romeo's. There we go. So other than that, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to smash the like button, subscribe for more content. Make sure to join us next time out where we are going to be tackling um, the spa circuit in Belgium. And other than that, that is all. So I will see you next time.